Hello, welcome back. And this is um, Exploratory Data Analysis, Statistics for Data Science, video three, topic three. We are talking about normality testing. So in the previous video, we discussed about histogram and normal distribution, which is also called as bell curve or Gaussian distribution. So it's a lot of techniques and methods are applied for normal distribution. And those techniques are called as parametric methods. So when you say parametric methods or techniques, parametric methods or techniques, it's only applicable for normal distributed, normally distributed data, which is Gaussian distribution. For all non-normal, you have other distributions like Bernoulli, you have Parato distribution, you have exponential distribution, you have Poisson distribution. So all of the other distribution we call as non-parametric. There are non-parametric techniques which are applicable for in, in on which your parametric methods methods are um, if it is not normal then you cannot apply parametric techniques we go for non-parametric techniques but usually parametric techniques are high accuracy so this is more um, high accuracy so we try to prefer parametric techniques if it is normal data so for that we need to understand whether the data is normal or not we know from our previous understanding that if the data is okay that's really weird this is better so if the data is like this symmetrical it's normal okay but where is the boundary where you say it is not normal okay um, well there are two methods we'll start with uh, skewness skewness you might have a data something distribution something like you have a very high number of variables in the minimum and then it goes really uh, okay so i just put it okay so this is also a distribution where you have a large number of data falling on the lower side and gradually having other data on the higher side you could also have a distribution something like this it's like kind of like a reverse of it okay these distributions are called as skewed distributions okay and there's a measure for this skewness and we call it a skewness factor or skewness factor represented by capital s for a perfectly normal distribution your s value is equal to zero right for um negatively skewed we have s value less than zero this curve is called as negatively skewed negatively skewed and it's easy to remember that because you can see that the tail of the distribution is going towards the negative side and for positively skewed this is positively skewed right the tail actually goes towards the positive side okay obviously the s value is greater than zero for the positively skewed so there are of course we have formulas for skewness which you can check it out not very important we have functions in python which can give you the skewness factor if the skewness factor is between plus or minus one if the skewness is between plus or minus one we say it is normal we say it is normal distribution the skewness factor is plus or minus one between plus or minus one anywhere in between that we say it's a normal distribution if it goes beyond it less than minus one or more than plus one we say it is not normal this is a practical this is a practical uh, numbers we use for our data science analysis but statistically if you want to go theoretical boundaries the theoretical boundaries are minus 1.96 less than yes uh, less than one point and plus one point so if the data is between minus 1.96 or plus 1.96 between that so it's like a number line we have plus 1.96 we have a zero here we have a minus 1.96 if this value falls anywhere between this then it is still can be taken theoretically as still a normal distribution for our practical purpose we go with plus or minus one okay so let's actually do this on one of our um let's say we'll take one of our blood pressure data so let's take we'll take this data we'll create some more cells 
So this is your blood pressure data. So sorry, this is not the blood pressure data. Where do you have blood pressure data? Do you have a blood pressure data? No, you did not. So let's create a blood pressure data. Um, so I'm going to say this is actually normality testing. Normality, normality. So I'm going to say blood pressure is equal to. I'm just going to just make up some blood pressure because I don't have real data. Uh, 135, 110, 115, 125, 130, uh, 1112, and could be anything, you know, 125 and stuff like that. Okay, so I want to test if my data is normal or not. All right, so the way we can test is by looking at the skewness factor. Before that, let us draw a histogram and then we go for the skewness. So for that, you need to download small packages. So I'm going to use Seaburn for this. Seaburn is one of the packages which, which you can plot things nicely. I call it as SB. Okay, SB dot, the histogram in Seaburn is called as disk plot this disk plot and you pass on your blood pressure and if to get the to get the plot in the in the same like you know in this in line we say mat plot lip in line that's the word we use we draw it no i did not run this okay so you get a beautiful graph and this is a histogram and as you can see it looks normal isn't it slightly tilted but it more or less looks normal for me so let me calculate the skewness and see if it is really a normal so i'm gonna say uh, print i'll write some text skewness of bp and then i say stats the function is simply skew and then you pass on the bp so my skewness is actually you can see that it's point minus 0 0.12 which is near to zero isn't it 0 0.12 is almost near to zero so it is very much near to a normal curve it is negative as you can see the the, the distribution is tilted that side so the tail is pointing towards the negative side so it is slightly negative but it is near to the normal distribution we could draw something which is more tilted if you want to look at it so let me simply draw in another distribution just for more clarity for you. So I'm going to draw something which is towards, um, let's say towards positive distribution. Okay. So for that, we need more data around higher, higher side. So sorry, lower side. So I'd say again, 120 and I call this as 122 and 120. 5 and 123 so i'm just putting a lot of values at 120 then i quickly say this is 130 this is 140 and this is 150 which is extending the curve so single values but it's extended if you draw this it is you can see that the, the tail is going towards thing and it's getting twisted so i'm going to just put another big number like 190 now you see that my skewness is actually 1.28 from our practical purpose 1.28 is more than one so it is not normal for us and you can see that graph is tilted and you have a tail pointing towards the positive side so it's a positively skewed non not normal distribution okay i hope that explains uh, the skewness okay so Let's go to a second measure, which is kurtosis. So let me draw another distribution. I think I got it a little better this time. Okay. And then um, you could also have distributions which are symmetric, not skewed. But it has other problems like it can have a dist you can have a distribution like 
this really big and you can also have distribution like really flat not much big smaller same data so this kind of this is this is also like uh, there is a boundaries for it and it goes beyond the boundaries it's, it becomes not normal and the measure of this peakedness is called as kurtosis and is represented by k so k value for perfectly distributed normal distributed is zero uh, if for a peaked distribution k value is greater than zero and for uh, you know flatter distributions k value is less than zero so negative k so it's negatively negative kurtosis and this is positive kurtosis the boundaries of kurtosis remain same practically we take minus one plus one and for theoretical purpose the boundaries remains same as your skewness i'm not going to explain the same explanation of as your skewness for us we consider the k value should be between plus or minus one in order it to be normal so for a distribution to pass for normality or normality testing it has to successfully have both skewness and kurtosis between plus or minus one In the distributions we have done i can also print kurtosis the formula for kurtosis the function for the kurtosis is simply kurtosis and then i'll change this as kurtosis okay so you can see from a kurtosis perspective the data is okay because we have 0.59 which is less than uh, plus one and it's between zero and one actually so this is fine from a kurtosis perspective but from a skewness perspective this is not correct so this is still not a normal distribution if the skewness is also okay then we can say it is normal distribution if you have a higher kurtosis more than one then you have a peaked curve something like this i'm going to just take this same thing again and this time i will keep the distribution more or less same so here I'm going to create 90, maybe 80, and then I'll put a lot of data in 120. So what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna create a peak in 120 region and then quickly going down. So the, the distribution will look, look like a peak, something like this. See, well, I can make it more melodious. If I put more data, let's say 100 and okay. And then here I can put some more like 140, 150. So you can see that, okay, this 140 is not good. So it's actually, I need to add more 120s to make it more bigger. So you can see that uh, I don't get a very melodious graph. I need to work on the numbers, but uh, kurtosis is 1.4 which is now it's a peaked if it is too flat then the kurtosis will be negative so if the data is too flat let's say all are around 120 and 125 there is no uh, extreme data so something like this um, what happens is data is more flat okay this is too peaked because oh have any other value okay so all are same we don't we have exactly the same so it's basically minus three is a minimum kurtosis you get so it's actually giving you minus three but let me put some two here i put a two then it becomes really peak so okay so you get the point so if it is too flat if i can generate a flatter data you'll get a graph like this it becomes negative kurtosis all right so that's your skewness and kurtosis this is a more theoretical explanation of it so this is negatively skewed that is positively skewed as i explained you and this kurtosis and these are the ranges of skewness and kurtosis for things to be normally distributed both your skewness and kurtosis should be same okay the next topic is measures uh, measure of distances so i'm going to take this into this video itself because i'm not going to explain all the different things there are different measures of distributions Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, and uh, Minkowski distance. But Euclidean distance is the one which we actually use for our most of the purposes. Simply, Euclidean distance is a straight line distance. In the space to, between two, two, two points, if you want to measure a straight line, it is simply square of the individual axes. It's a Pythagoras theorem. So A square plus B square is equal to C square. I hope you remember the high school mathematics. And that 
in n space n, n dimensional space we call it as euclidean distance and statistics okay that's the standard one we use for almost all the purposes we do also have manhattan and minkowski which is not important for us but just as it in the slide manhattan distance is a distance measurement based on a grid system so if you want to calculate the distance of this so you can simply take you know a and b so if you want to have a distance of c which is actually this one right you can simply add up all the a's because this 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 adds up to uh, uh, a and this 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 adds up to b so if you simply say a plus b it will be equal to c so manhattan is much simpler than your pythagoras or euclidean distance you simply add it up and this is more like a grid system like you're traveling you're, you're trying to calculate in the buildings in a map or um, so in data science we don't really encounter this manhattan it's more mathematics and statistics it's a different way of thinking and minkowski distance the third one which is again uh, more generalized system and this is the formula for minkowski and if you put r is equal to 1 it becomes manhattan formula or manhattan distance if you put r is equal to 2 it becomes your pythagoras or euclidean distance and you can put r is equal to any different value to get a customized uh, distance calculation system and um, and if you put r is equal to infinite it called as uh, supremum so which is absolutely not in our scope so what are these these are the these are different methods to measure distance between two points because all of your algorithms machine learning algorithms is about distance measurements in the space most of them at least um, so um, this is this knowledge of this is is important but only euclidean is good enough other two things are not relevant for us okay that brings us to the completion of your second module sorry third module which is exploratory data analysis and that leaves us with the last module hypothesis testing which will be next video so i hope you are following this video and it's useful if you have any feedbacks and comments please let me know in the uh, uh, in, in the comments so that i can incorporate in the next videos if you like this channel this video please subscribe and click notification so that when i upload next videos you will get information thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video